So in this video we're going to look at some examples of partial differential equations which are extremely important applications of partial differentiation and what I'm going to do is write two such partial differential equations down and in both cases we're going to look at functions which are solutions of them and verify that they are solutions by substituting them into the equation and seeing that they satisfy it. So the first equation that I want to write down is Laplace's equation and I'm going to be looking at this equation as a function of two variables so this is called Laplace's equation in two dimensions and Laplace's equation takes the form d2f by dx squared plus d2f by dy squared is equal to zero and what I want to do is I want to show that this is satisfied by f a function of x and y equal to the logarithm of the sum of x squared plus y squared. So what I'm going to need to do is to calculate the second derivative with respect to x and I also need to going to calculate the second derivative with respect to y and I'm going to add them together and we want to see that this is zero with this um, function here and we see in that way that it satisfies Laplace's equation in two dimensions. So what I'm going to have to do is to calculate these things and let me make some room to do that. So we're going to need to calculate the second derivative with respect to x which I can call fxx in this way and that means the derivative with respect to x of the derivative with respect to x of the logarithm of x squared plus y squared and to do this we're going to need to use the chain rule. So what we have is d by dx of and now the derivative of the logarithm is going to be 1 over the argument of the logarithm so we're going to get over x squared plus y squared and then we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of this with respect to x and that's going to be 2x. And now to differentiate this again with, with respect to x we see that there's an x dependence here and here on the bottom so we have to either use the quotient rule or the product rule together with the chain rule for powers and I'm going to take the latter route but let me make some room. So what I'm going to get is the from hitting the uh, term in the numerator I'm going to get 2 so I have 2 over x squared plus y squared and when I hit the term on the denominator this is all to the power of minus 1 so I'm going to get a minus sign I already have a 2x in the numerator so that's going to be there but I'm going to multiply by another power of 2x and then on the bottom I have x squared plus y squared all squared and now what I want to do is I want to put these on a common denominator which is going to be x squared plus y squared all squared and on the numerator I'm going to get 2 times x squared plus y squared and then I'm going to be subtracting from it 2x times 2x that's 4x squared so I'm going to have 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x squared so I'm going to get overall 2y squared minus 2x squared and that's my answer for the second derivative so let me just pause and make some room so in a very similar way I can calculate the second derivative with respect to y and what you will find if you do this and I encourage you to do it is that you're going to get 2x squared minus 2y squared divided by x squared plus y squared all squared. And actually you could almost guess this if you think about it for a moment. The initial function which we're differentiating is symmetric in x and y. In other words if I were to take x and replace it by y and replace y by x 
the function would look exactly the same. So it is easy to imagine that the second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y are going to be related in the same way. In other words, if I take this answer and replace everywhere where I have y and x and everywhere where I have an x a y, I will get this result. But it's also good to check it explicitly and to see what's going on. So now we have the result for the two terms, and therefore we can see that the sum of the second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y is going to be, if I add these two terms together, this and this, I'm going to get the same denominator here, and in the numerator I will have 2y squared minus 2x squared plus 2x squared, so the x squareds will cancel, and then minus 2y squared, which will cancel with the 2y squared, so will I, I will indeed get 0 as required. So what we have seen is that this function here, the logarithm of x squared plus y squared, satisfies Laplace's equation. And what I want to do on the next slide is to do another example, which is a partial differential equation called the wave equation. So the second partial differential equation which we're going to look at in this video is the wave equation. So we have a function f of two variables, t and x, and we take the second derivative with respect to t, and then we subtract the second derivative with respect to x, multiplied by a constant, which I'm calling here v squared. And what we want to do in this video is we want to show that this is solved by f of t and x is equal to the sine of vt minus x. And just as before, what we're going to do is to take this function, differentiate it twice with respect to t, and then subtract from that v squared times the second derivative with respect to x of this function. So let's start off by calculating the second derivative with respect to t of the sine of v t minus x. So this is the derivative with respect to t of the first derivative of this function. When you differentiate sine, you're going to get a cosine. When you differentiate this, we will get a power of v. So what we're going to get is v times the cosine of v t minus x, close brackets, close brackets. And now when I differentiate this, this cosine is going to become minus sine, and I'm going to pull out another power of v, so what I'm going to get is minus v squared sine of v t minus x, close brackets. So that's our result for the first term here. We've seen that we get minus v squared times the original function. So I'll make myself some room, and then we can calculate the second term. So our second term is the derivative with respect to x of the derivative with respect to x of the sine of v t minus x. And this is the derivative with respect to x of now, the derivative of sine is going to give us a cosine, and then we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of vt minus x with respect to x, and that's just going to give us a minus sign. So I'm going to get minus the cosine of vt minus x, close brackets, close brackets. And now I'm going to have to differentiate this again. And when I differentiate it again, the cosine is going to give me minus sine, which will make this plus. However, I'm going to get a minus sign from the chain rule when I differentiate this. So overall, I'm going to get minus sine of v t minus x. And now what I have to do is I have to take this result for our second derivative with respect to x. I have to multiply it by v squared, 
and subtract it. So that means this will become plus, and in that sense add it to our result here, which was minus v squared. So what I'm going to do is make myself some room. And so therefore we can see that d2f by dt squared minus v squared d2f by dx squared for our function that we have looked at in this example is going to be minus v squared sine of vt minus x and then it is minus v squared times minus sine of and I'm running out of room so I'm going to have to pause and shrink this a little times the sine of vt minus x close brackets close brackets and we see here that here we have a minus sign multiplied by a minus sign so they become plus so we have exactly the same as this but with a plus sign so they are going to cancel so therefore f of x and t is equal to sine of vt minus x solves the equation. So in that way we've seen that this function satisfies the wave equation and that concludes this example.